what do you see as a, what it takes to be a blockbuster writer, not just to be a published author, but to be someone, one of those rare individuals who really breaks through the noise and changes the conversation? I love this question because I've done a few pieces on this because I've, I've wanted to dissect and figure out that exact answer. So there's not a clear cut, very obvious thing. It's more along the lines of, do they tend to meet these certain criteria? So an example would be David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me, who wrote a memoir. He was offered to traditionally publish. He didn't like the deal, from my understanding, and decided to self-publish. And everybody told him, don't go the self-publishing route. Well, he sold millions of copies. And he was the number two best-selling memoir behind Michelle Obama in the first year. Wow, and so that when, yeah, so when I looked at his particular journey as a successful mega blockbuster author, I noticed some things about him. Uh, three, three in particular that I think apply to pretty much any author. Uh, number one is to become the book, to be the embodiment of the book. I think it was Naval Ravikant, the founder of AngelList, who had this quote that was like, in order to write a great book, you must first become the book. And I think a lot of authors have this tendency, and, and it's a human tendency, I don't, I don't criticize, but we have this tendency to pretend basically that we're somebody that we're not right one day you see this on instagram every now and then where yeah, it's I mean, like every now and then it's that's the norm <laughs> almost yeah it's like all of a sudden this guy is posting his own quotes of himself on how to like change your life and it's like dude you know it wasn't that long ago where you were binge drinking and <laughs> you know crying in a corner at a party or whatever you know uh, so and, and I think we're all guilty of this on some level, right? We want to elevate our status to something else. And so we try on this posturing of what we believe a thought leader might look like. With David Goggins' case, he quite literally is his story can't hurt me. He started off as a 300-pound overweight exterminator who hated his job, and wasn't proud bug of himself. exterminator, to, to clarify. Yeah, bug exterminator. <laughs> and and he didn't like who he was. And then he saw a commercial for the Navy SEALs. He started training himself, going on 100 mile runs, even though he was, you know, overweight. It was a very slow progression for him with a lot of failures along the way of him becoming a Navy SEAL and then becoming an ultra endurance athlete. And then literally earning the title of the toughest man alive, right? And so he was the book before he decided to write the book. So I think you become the person you need to become first before you say, I'm going to go write a book and tell other people how to live their lives. Like no one likes yeah. advice on how to live their life unless it's coming from a person who's like, look, I had the exact problem that you had. I get it. I totally appreciate it. And so I know exactly what you're going through. Here's what I did. Here's, here's my recipe. 